So last time uh, I raised this question that if semiconductor has 10 to the power 12 times smaller conductivity than copper or metallic conductors, why are we so excited about semiconductors? And the answer is that in semiconductors, we have an extremely good control on conductivity. For copper or silver or uh, aluminium, whatever conductivity is, it is there. We can't do much about that. But here, we can control the conductivity. We can change the conductivity and uh, we can change it in a desired profile in a particular uh, piece if we wish that this portion should have this much of conductivity and that portion should have that much of conductivity, we can do that with semiconductors. So, that control that uh, we have on conductivity, that is the key factor why this uh, semiconductor electronics is so useful and versatile. So, how do we control the conductivity? How do we change the conductivity in a semiconductor? So, the first and foremost thing is doping, very, very important doping. So, again uh, taking silicon as an uh, example, uh, pure silicon as you know, you have uh, that uh, tetrahedral structure and covalent bonding. So, silicon and silicon they are bonded by two electrons, two sp3 electrons and each silicon is bonded to four other silicons and so on. So, you have this kind of structure. Representation, two dimensional representation as I had told this is a three dimensional as shown that model wall stick model ok. So, do not confuse with double bond right two lines also is uh, used for uh, double bond triple bond and so on these are to represent that it is a covalent bond and two electrons are here in this bond. So, the structure uh, configuration is electronic configuration is uh, z is equal to 14. So, you have uh, 1s2, 2s2, p6 and then 3s2, p2. So, these four electrons they uh, go in this sp3 bonding in this uh, structure. Now, doping means you purposely introduce uh, some other foreign material in this other than silicon. So, silicon is a uh, tetravalent and if you go one column right in the periodic table, you have pentavalent elements, phosphorus is there, arsenic is there. So, these are pentavalent in the sense that last uh, uh, this uh, will be S 2 P 3. So, 5 outer electrons. Here you have 4 outer electrons. So, what happens if I for example, if I take arsenic and uh, through metallurgical processes, we diffuse this uh, little bit of arsenic into the silicon crystal and uh, the process has to be well formulated and well implemented. So, that uh, we retain that silicon crystal at the end, we have that same structure of silicon and some of the silicon atoms are replaced by these arsenic atoms. So, that is known as doping, we have doped arsenic into silicon. So, suppose uh, a particular silicon is now replaced by arsenic. 
in this kind of crystal structure the minimum energy configuration is when four electrons go into sp3 uh, quantum states and then they uh, part take part in bonding so that's the minimum energy configuration so since the crystal structure is still the same the four electrons of this uh, these four outer electrons of arsenic will again go into the bonding okay so you will have this kind of bonding with uh, this arsenic also this arsenic is also bonded to the four neighbors the four neighbors in that uh, tetrahedral structure and four of these outer electrons are consumed in that but the fifth one the extra electron cannot go in this bonding and that is uh, somewhere let's say somewhere here is still bonded to this uh, atom it's still uh, going around if you think in that uh, manner uh, about this but then uh, it's it's in a in a much higher energy if electron is uh, taking part in this bonding then this energy is very low very low means in the valence band but this one is not uh, bonded here so it's it's very very weakly bound to this so as compared to these valence band electrons this electron will have much higher uh, energy but then uh, you can also compare suppose you have a silicon here and you have this bond and this bond is broken and this electron comes here this electron is in conduction band a valence uh, band electron has gone from the valence band to conduction band this bond is broken and this electron has gone to conduction band here the bond is not broken but uh, there is an extra electron and that extra electron is outside this bonds now this is a new energy level the energy levels uh, which are created in which these electrons are there to start with they are different energy levels which we call impurity energy levels so in this case for pentavalent uh, uh, impurities if this is the valence band and this is the conduction band and this is the gap this is that gap the new energy levels are created close to the conduction band somewhere here this is the impurity level okay these are new energy levels and these electrons which are very weakly bond uh, uh, bonded with uh, this one this uh, these electrons they lie here so similarly you have arsenic here and there and there and there and those electrons are in these impurity levels and this gap here this gap here this difference here is few tens of uh, milli electron volts maybe 15 20 30 milli electron volts 40 milli electron volts of this energy and remember kt itself is 26 milli electron volt so it's comparable to that is just comparable to that and therefore uh, through thermal interactions these can easily go into the conduction band through thermal interaction these uh, can easily go to this conduction band and uh, then they are free to move uh, anywhere so that means this electron which is very weakly bound to this arsenic so it can go from this atom to that atom and that atom to that atom and so on so it can go anywhere from here to here and once it goes uh, in this uh, surrounding the uh, energy is here in the conduction band so that's the meaning of uh, these electrons going from the impurity level to the conduction band okay and once uh, this electron leaves this arsenic this becomes a positive ion
okay all these uh, silicon which are here where the bonds are not broken and all bonds are are intact it's electrically neutral you have uh, same number of protons and same number of electrons but uh, here the number of protons uh, remains the same and one electron has uh, gone somewhere else so this leaves behind this positive ions so this is how we get uh, a doped semiconductor and this is uh, pentavalent impurities that we have doped and in this case you have larger number of uh, electrons here okay so to start with there were some holes and equal number of electrons but then uh, because of these impurity levels uh, uh, these electrons have gone here and so Ne is much much greater than NH how much greater that depends on uh, how much impurities we have doped what fraction of total is ar arsenic so that will decide this normally let us say ppm type uh, doping ppm type doping what is ppm parts per million okay parts per million 1 in 10 to the power 6 so that is called ppm parts per million so this type of doping if you do if you do then uh, you will have some uh, uh, one part in 10 to the power 6 so that's the fraction you are, you are putting new electrons there new conduction electrons there so this ne will be much much larger than this nh so the charge carriers remember in semiconductors if you apply electric field if you connect it to a battery then uh, the electrical conduction is because of these electrons conduction electrons and also because of these holes because here also you have some movement of uh, electrons and so you have i equal to i e plus i h now in this kind of doping this contribution is much more than this right this uh, contribution to current because of these electrons conduction electrons is much more as compared to the contribution from these holes so this uh, these electrons are negatively charged and these holes are equivalent to positive charge because uh, once uh, an electron moves to this empty state because of uh, some electric field if some electron moves this uh, 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 it, and populates this quantum states then this quantum state becomes full and this becomes empty so you can also say that a hole has gone from here to here so uh, the movement of hole and movement of electron these valence electrons they are in opposite directions in an electric field so holes behave as positive charge so these holes can be uh, told can be called positive charge carriers and these electrons can be called negative charge carriers so the current is dominated by the negative charge carriers not the positive charge carriers and therefore this kind of semiconductor is known as n type semiconductors negative type negative charged charge carriers are in 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 larger numbers so n type semiconductors okay where uh, number of uh, conduction electrons is much larger than number of holes those are known as n type semiconductors now a very interesting thing happens what happens to the number of holes in intrinsic case we have some number of holes here some number of electrons here number is equal this number of conduction electrons is same as number of holes for intrinsic semiconductors and now you are putting some impurity increasing this ne so this ne is increased that is fine is there any effect on the number of holes and uh, yes 
there is an effect, profound effect. Why? This number of holes, that density goes down. You remember, you always have a generation of electron hole pair and recombination of electron hole pair. If you have a, if you have small number of electrons here and equal number of holes here, there is some probability of electron going and filling a hole. But if you have much, much larger number of electrons here, you have increased the number of electrons, then the probability that one, hole, one electron goes and fills this hole and this uh, pair is destroyed, this electron just goes and sits in this quantum state. So, you, know, you do not have any more uh, uh, electron here, this quantum state becomes empty and this quantum state which was empty becomes full. So, this hole is also gone. So, electron hole pair is gone because of this recombination. So, the probability that some electron will come here and fill this hole, this probability will increase largely. Right? You have so many electrons or some electron coming and, and sitting here, this probability will be increased many, many fold. So, through these recombinations, the number of holes will decrease and a new equilibrium will be set up. So, Ne increases. So, through this doping, Ne increases. and at the same time NH decreases. And there is a very, very simple and interesting uh, relation between this and that relation is Ne into NH remains constant. Independent of doping concentration. If you do not dope and leave it intrinsic, then Ne is equal to NH and we write it is equal to Ni. So, Ne into NH is Ni square. When you dope, Ne has gone up, NH has gone down, but then this relation still holds this relation still holds for intrinsic or extrinsic ok. This is another word extrinsic. You have intrinsic and extrinsic. When you are doping from external world you are putting impurities that becomes extrinsic. So, intrinsic or extrinsic this relation remains the same. Only the temperature can change this Ni, doping level does not change this. So, for example, if you have a silicon, you know there are some 5 into 10 to the power 22 atoms per centimeter cube and uh, for intrinsic, Intrinsic uh, silicon, the number of electrons equal to number of holes is how much? 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube. We had given this data in one of the lectures. So, this is Ni. Suppose you do a ppm doping, 1 ppm doping. That means, 1 out of 10 to the power 6 silicon are replaced by arsenic or phosphorus 
and uh, each this dopant atom gives you one extra electron in the impurity level and uh, then in conduction level. So, this number of uh, electrons extra electrons that you have put in is uh, 1 per 10 to the power 6 and so that will be 5 into 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube. So, you have put this many extra electrons and it is uh, such uh, uh, in a large number as compared to this intrinsic one the total number of electrons per centimeter cube which you may expect this plus this. This you are putting uh, from uh, doping and this was already there. So, but 10 power 16 plus 10 to the power 10 will still remain 10 to the power 16. Okay. So, you can take this as the conduction electron number density after doping. So, what is the number density nh number density of hole that will be n i square divided by n e because n e into n h should remain n i square and that is equal to this is n i. So, that is equal to n i square 2.25 into 10 to the power 20 and divided by n e which is 5 into 10 to the power 16 and of course, per centimeter cube and this is now 0 0.45 0 0.45 into 10 to the power 4 per centimeter cube which is just 4500 per centimeter cube. Okay, so, number of holes has gone from 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 from here it has gone to just 4500 so, number of holes has gone terribly down. So, that is uh, how you have these charge carrier densities in doped semiconductor and that is how you are controlling the conductivity because the doping is uh, under our control. Whether we do one ppm doping or what uh, ppm doping that is under our control and that will decide what will be the conductivity of this material. The other kind of doping is when you put a trivalent impurity in uh, this uh, silicon crystal. Okay. Trivalent is one column left in the periodic table and you have gallium in that, you have uh, aluminium in that or boron. So, if you have uh, that trivalent impurity let us say boron. So, the outer one will have S 2 P instead of S 2 P 2 in silicon it is S 2 P 2 in boron or aluminium. Uh, it will be S 2 P. So, there are three outer electrons only. So, if this is doped in silicon what will happen? So, suppose you have this silicon crystal and once again doping is a very sophisticated metallurgical process. You have to uh, retain that silicon crystal structure the structure uh, that is there, this is this kind of structure, this kind of structure in the entire three dimensions. So, you have to retain that structure and ensure that the impurity is uh, just going and sitting at the site of one silicon ion. So, uh, very nice metallurgical processes or some processes one has to do. And then uh, you have let us say you have silicon and silicon and so on that same diagram and so on. 
and suppose this particular silicon atom is uh, replaced by this uh, trivalent impurity let us say boron. What happens? Boron has only three outer electrons sp electrons s 2 p. So, when uh, it goes into that s p 3 there are only three electrons that can fill that s p 3 energy levels. Okay? So, instead of four only three can be filled and one will remain empty. That means, in this structure you have one broken bond somewhere the silicon is providing you 4 electrons, 4 sp3 electrons, but this boron is providing only 3. So, one goes here, one goes here, one goes here and here the bond is not complete. So, you have a broken bond, you have an empty quantum state here and the electron can come here and complete this bond. So, you have an empty quantum state or in other words you have a hole here. If an electron comes and sits here, this uh, empty quantum state, state will get populated or it will be filled. What does that mean? You are creating new energy levels. If a bond is broken here, suppose a bond is broken here and some electron goes and uh, then it sits here, is some energy. But if the bond is broken here and electron comes and sits here, this energy is different from this and slightly different, slightly different from this energy. These two are different. So, these are all same. You have a, a bond here. So, this electron, if electron is here, what is its energy? So, that uh, constitutes that valence band. Okay? These energies, these energies. So, new impurity level energies are created and those energy levels are created close to the valence band somewhere here. So, this is the impurity level. And these impurity levels are all empty. A broken bond not broken it did it was it did not exist to start with empty an empty quantum state here exists with boron. Anywhere you have a boron, anywhere you have a boron, one of the quantum states will be empty. So, you are creating new and empty quantum states, the energy of which will be slightly higher than the top of the valence band. And how much higher? Once again, this is few milli few tens of milli electron volt right 10 20 30 40 milli electron volts that is this empty states are there remember empty states are there and since this is only few tens of uh, mevs and kt is 626 mev very easily through thermal interactions these valence electrons will fill these uh, empty states. There are many quantum states although the energy is same and it is not broadened also it is a quite sharp energy level here in, in n type also there was sharp energy level here. Why sharp? Because in uh, doping um, this uh, boron and another boron is widely apart. And therefore, boron boron interaction impurity levels do not interact within themselves. So, it is quite sharp. But nevertheless, all these empty quantum states are uh, very easily they are filled from here and holes are created in the valence band. So, by putting this uh, trivalent impurity in silicon, you are creating many many holes new holes in valence band. And uh, to start with there were some uh, quantum states filled by electrons in the conduction band and some holes were there, corresponding holes were there, but now you are putting many more holes through this doping. 
So in this case, what will happen? In this case, NH will be much, much larger than NE. So in current, I equal to IE plus IH, most of the contribution comes from holes. Most of contribution comes from holes because the number of holes is, is much, much larger. And this is uh, like positive charge carriers if you talk in terms of holes. And therefore, these type of semiconductors are known as P-type semiconductors, positive type, P-type semiconductors. Once again, if the number of holes uh, are uh, much larger here, then electron coming and falling into some hole, that probability will increase. If you have less number of holes, then there is some probability. But if there are too many holes and some electron is there, then uh, it's falling into this hole or that hole or that hole or that hole will be much larger. And therefore, through recombinations, the number of electrons will reduce from intrinsic. So, that same equation will hold Ne into NH is equal to Ni square. So, that holds here also. So, both kinds of doping, P-type doping, N-type doping, impurity levels. By the way, these are, there's another name for this. This is known as acceptor acceptor energy levels and the energy levels which were created here when we did n type doping they are known as donor impurity levels because they do not elect they donate electrons here and these accept electrons from here so this is another name so these are the kind of uh, doped semiconductor which is the real strength of uh, all semiconductor electronics the way you dope you can create uh, varieties of applications of uh, semiconductors.